I'm wondering if you could give us a bit of a, a summary of the evidence for uh, exercise as a treatment uh, in depression. Yeah, sure. So, yes, uh, very briefly, the first trial that I did was a randomized clinical trial trying to evaluate the effects of exercise in people uh, with moderate to severe depression uh, with inpatients in a psychiatric ward. And that started in 2008 and ended in 2015. And in that trial, we just wanted to know whether adding up exercise could help to alleviate depressive symptoms or, and improve quality of life of these inpatients. So this is how, this is my first trial and how I started doing clinical trials. But now we have uh, a lot and lots of evidence uh, showing that exercise can help to alleviate depressive symptoms. Uh, and obviously a clin clinical trial is somehow limited to a specific set of participants. But uh, now we have enough literature from different settings, different authors in different countries, uh, in dif using different exercise approaches. That, that means different intensities, different, different volumes, and different uh, uh, frequency or weekly frequency. And when we have all the literature uh, all together and we evaluate all the studies that we have using meta-analytic te techniques, or running meta-analysis, we have clear and consistent evidence showing that exercise, in fact, can reduce symptoms of people with depression, regardless their depressive symptomatology at the, at the beginning of the trial, uh, regardless their gender, their age, and any other uh, factors that can potentially uh, modif or they could potentially modify the effect, uh, but no, we have consistent evidence showing that exercise indeed uh, works for depression. Mm. And, and when you say consistent evidence, it, it seems like there's dozens of these meta-analyses showing positive results, and some of which your even meta-analyses show very large effect sizes as well, so uh, quite a, a big effect on a reduction in depressive symptoms. Yes, now we have a lot, lots and lots of evidence, I guess. We have over 20 meta-analyses performed on the topic. Uh, we uh, published the uh, last one from our group in 2023, putting together over 40 tr uh, trials and using different analytic approaches, using subgroup analysis and other uh, sensitivity analysis that we can explore further. Uh, but when we have all the studies combined, we have seen that we have a moderate to large effect uh, on depressive symptoms uh, in people with depression or depressive symptoms. Uh, so yes, uh, and when we say that's a moderate effect, that is considered a very good statement uh, because most of the interventions for depression, they have small to moderate effect sizes. And we have to take some care when comparing different interventions. But the message that I want to pass through is that we have consistent evidence showing that exercise works and can reduce at least moderately the symptoms of someone with depression. And I think you alluded to something there as well, right, in that this is effective for people with major depressive disorder and for people with subclinical uh, symptoms of depression who might have symptoms but not necessarily meet criterion for a clinical cutoff. So, you know, across the spectrum, if you like, of, of depressive symptomatology, exercise seems to have considerable effects. Indeed. Uh, one of the sensitivity analysis that I just commented that we performed in the meta-analysis, it was that one, trying to differentiate the, the effects of exercise in those that just have depressive symptoms, but not necessarily a formal diagnosis of depression. And people with a formal diagnosis of depression meeting all the DSM criteria or ICD criteria for uh, depression. 
And yes, we can say that exercise works for both of them. And uh, that should be encouraged, encouraged as a potential intervention for everybody, let, let's say. Uh, there is no restriction whether people with higher severities of symptoms can do or shouldn't do exercise. Uh, so exercise can benefit anyone that can exercise. <laughs> that's one thing that's important. A question that uh, is quite common is, uh, do people with severe depression or moderate depression exercise? And, and do they benefit from uh, exercise? And the answer for both questions is yes. Uh, yeah, yes, they can benefit from exercise. As I said, my first trial was with severely depressed inpatients in a psychiatric ward, and we did find some significant benefits. Um, and yes, people with severe, even with severe depression, they can exercise. Obviously, that are much more challenging to encourage people with depression to exercise. We know how hard it is to anybody change their behavior. Uh, and obviously, when someone is depressed, there are additional barriers towards the adoption of uh, uh, an active lifestyle, like a lifestyle. But yes, uh, it is possible uh, to make them exercise. And one thing that's important, I don't know if you are about to make these questions and I am just going through that's fine. <laughs> before you, you ask me. Yeah. But one question, is, uh, one thing that people have in mind is how hard should be the exercise or how intense should be the exercise for someone to benefit? We have seen in meta-analysis benefits from different intensities, like even... Uh, moderate or intense or even light uh, light exercise can be beneficial uh, but the, the best exercise uh, is the one that is actually done so most, many people believe that just the intense exercise will bring benefits and some pe people with depression want exercise hard and obviously you shouldn't encourage someone with, with anybody that, that are, is not doing exercise, you shouldn't encourage them to start exercising uh, in a very intensely. So it should be progressive. But yes, you can have different benefits from different intensities and start slow and progressing to uh, higher intensity and higher frequency and etc. Yeah, yeah. So the meta-analysis that I think you're referring to with the lead author, High Cell, I think is how you say it, 2023, which you were a part of, right? It seems like you guys did find that uh, large, or oh, sorry, moderate and vigorous intensities tend to have large effect sizes. And I think that's been, seems to be quite a, a consistent finding. One of the recent network meta-analyses, um, No Tell et al, 2024, looked at 200 plus studies as well. They saw, I think, a dose response um, relationship for intensity. But the point you're saying then, right, is about adherence. Okay, what's the point in having a really intense um, exercise regime if the person can't actually comply or adhere with that? Then you're not going to get any benefit from it. 